Man, it's, a, it's already a, a great summer. We've got a parenting class on Wednesday nights at 5.30 that has been nothing short of remarkable. It's, it's how to raise kingdom kids. And, and really, that's the kind of kids we have to be producing now as a church. We can't produce whatever the world will allow us to produce in our kids anymore. We've got to take the initiative and boldly parent our children. Um, our internship is reloading, I believe, next week. So if, if you've, you've considered being an intern, um, we, I want to welcome you to pick up an application and schedule an interview and just see what God does in your heart through that process. If nothing else, I think some things will become clear to you just in that exchange, just of filling out an application and submitting it and and, and scheduling an interview and because the interview is going to check you. It's going to check your heart. It's going gonna, it's gonna to ask you questions that maybe nobody's ever asked you that are, that are important questions. And then we've got next steps for you guys that are relatively new here. After the 11 o'clock service, we serve lunch and we have child care and your kids get to eat and you get to meet leadership. Paul said, know those whom you labor among. And I think you get to know the leadership here. It's going to help your walk with God. It's going to help you relationally with God. You know, and I'll tell you this, everywhere I look, man, God's doing something incredible everywhere I look. It, it, I, and I, I already referred to the guy who drove us to the airport yesterday, but he, he's just gushing about what God's doing in his life and, and the impact that the service streams have had on his life and his wife's life. She's a doctor. And it, it, I'm just sitting there listening to this guy just gush. And then I think about all the people here in the church, what God's doing, you know, and, and I, I don't want anybody left out of this. My, my intent for this service today is, as every service, is to bring elevation in your life. And I believe it's like a rising tide. Man, it affects every ship in the water. So it, it's not just you fin in your financial life or your marital life or your, your parent. Or, or it, it's your whole life gets elevated. That's what the blessings of Abraham are. All around us, listen, all around us, people are being saved, healed, delivered, set free. And why? Because, man, that's the expectation that we put on God's word, God's promise, the gospel. That's what the gospel does for our lives. You know, it's interesting, the prophet Joel, he said, he said, man, the, the former and latter rain. And I'd never really thought of this. I was in the word this week and I never really thought of it when I read that. What God does in our lives in these times is he combines the former and the latter rain together for us. And what that is, is his presence. It's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Man, that the former and the latter rain, they're not separate. He combines them. See, this is a new and better covenant. What the, what the, the word says, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Draw near to God. Man, seek him. And, and let me tell you, I, I get that there's, there's the qualifiers that we've got to maybe differentiate, differentiate between God's face and God's hand or God, and I, but I, let's not do that today. Let's just draw near to God. And what's going to happen? He's going to draw near to us. See, what God is, is he's only faithful. So whenever you're thinking, God, where are you? Man, let me tell you, that's, that's not being led by the Spirit. Man, he says, look, unless you're just seeking him because you know you're going to find him. You're seeking, let me tell you, fellas, that avenue of escape that all God provides for every temptation that comes into our lives. God's only faithful. You know, what I want to do today, and I, I'll tell you, yesterday the Lord really stirred my heart about praying for people that are, that are dealing with sickness and dealing with poverty in their lives. And let me just explain this, okay? The, I'm talking about chronic sickness and chronic poverty. Where it's like, man, I've tried and tried and tried to get ahead, but I can't get ahead. See, the Bible says the way a man thinks, so he is. 
So if you're looking at the way things see or how, they, how it feels to you, it's always going to be tam- it's always going to be damped. It's always going to, it's always going to be suppressed. But see what God wants to do, because remember Jesus in Hebrews, Hebrews 13, Jesus Christ, listen, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So here's the, that's a, God's got a precedent. If God has blessed anybody ever, he's bound by his promise to bless you. If Jesus ever walked by somebody and they touched the hem of his garment and were healed and restored and power came out of him, he has to do it for you. He is bound to his promise. He is bound to his word. See, so what we do, the way I was raised, and and, and you have to almost come off of this because religious people take offense at this, but we put a demand on God's promise just like we would an ATM card with money in the bank that we have. There's an account that God has given you as a believer in Jesus where you're an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus. The exact same inheritance Jesus has, you enter into. So now let's draw on that inheritance. You know, what Jesus said, God, I I know you hear me. God, I know you're listening. God, I know I have what I say. And and so so Jesus being the same yesterday, so, so here's this Jesus in Acts 10, 38. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. Now listen, and with power. If you're taking notes, different, listen, he anointed him, he touched him, he put his presence, the presence of the Holy Spirit, listen, and power, the Holy Spirit and power. They aren't, they aren't exclusive of each other, but let me tell you, he differentiated between the two. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and who went about doing good are godly things, and healing all who are oppressed by the devil. And then, it, and then here's the clincher, for God was with him. See, so you combine those two, cross-reference those two verses, Hebrews 13 and Acts 10, Jesus the same yesterday and forever, and he, what did he do? He went about doing good and healing all. He went about bringing people to God, relationally to God. Do you understand how big a deal this is? That we've got a relationship with the creator I mean, God's on the throne. God, let me just tell you something. Man, he's right there. He's leaning in right now. You have not because you ask not. You have not because you ask amiss. Man, if I were you, I'd find out how to ask. If I were you, I'd find out how to put a demand on God's healing presence, on God's prosperity. And I know both of those things get get slapped around by the media and honestly, a lot of the church world. But I'm telling you, Man, it's God's heart for you to be saved, healed, delivered with nothing missing and nothing broken. In Ephesians 6, Paul wrote, therefore take up the whole armor of God. Why? That you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. And the next verse says, stand therefore. So, so wait a second. What do I have to do? I just have to take a stand. See, a lot of that is pick a side. Do you want to be sick or do you want to be well? Do you want poverty or you want prosperity? Choose this day whom you're going to serve. You've got to serve sickness. You've got to bow to sickness for it to take over your life. And I think too much of the church has chronic sickness where you're like, well, I've got an old injury that now it's arthritic. It's like, wait a second. My Bible says Those who are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish in the courts of our God. And even in old age will be fresh and flourishing in the name of Jesus. Where does does chronic arthritis fit into that? Well, you know, I smoked for 20 years. Man, what God's doing in Newton, there are creative miracles that God gives us. I mean, how many paralytics, how many blind people were there from birth? And the next thing you knew, they they ran into Jesus or a man of God carrying the same anointing as Jesus. See, that's what this is. Stand there for. See, I I I I want to, I just want to turn this loose today. I want to give you an opportunity if you're dealing with sickness, if you're dealing with poverty in your life. And let me explain poverty to you. Poverty isn't you without. Poverty is you living with just enough. 
Listen, a poverty mindset is, I wish I could give more. I wish I could do more. That comes from a poverty mindset. Well, is your cup, we're optimistic, so it's half full. No, that's a poverty mindset. A prosperity mindset is, my cup runs over. See, God's called you, let me tell you how this works. God's called you to live in the overflow. Do you, you, let me, I, I believe the will of God, the, prin, the principle of what you have is the seed God gives you. I believe the overflow is the bread God gives you. He gives seed to the sower and bread to eat. But I think a lot of people are having to use that seed to eat and get by. Well, it's just been a rough patch. It's been a rough season. You stop saying that. The Bible says, don't worry saying, what will we eat or what will we wear or where will we live? See, I think that if we bridle our tongue, and let me tell you, man, the tongue being the, str- the smallest yet the strongest me- member, it's the rudder to the ship of your life. See, we're in a better covenant. Do you understand in the, in the, in the, the old covenant through the wilderness, their clothes didn't wear out. Their clothes grew with them. Man, and we're in a better covenant than that. And see, there's so much, it's like, well, what are we going to do? Well, what's going on in America? I'll tell you what's going on in America. Whatever we say is going on in America. See, I believe that, that uh, a strong America comes from a strong church. I believe a strong church comes from strong men leading homes in the church. See, there, there are personal breakthroughs. And, and there's corporate breakthroughs. And I believe today there's a corporate breakthrough for people in, 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 that are dealing with a sickness or dealing with poverty. And, and, and it simply is we obey God's word in our lives. So if you're here and there's maybe something that just dinged in your heart when I, when I talked about sickness and I talked about poverty and you need a breakthrough today. I just want you to stand wherever you are right now. See, what God's going to do, he's going to release an increase of revelation and blessing into your lives today. So just stand. If that, if, if. Just, we're just going to take a stand today. See, because some of this requires a fight. And right now, you might be fighting, you might be thinking, ah, I don't want anybody, I don't, what are people going to think? I don't personally care what people think. I really don't. And, and I, I don't know that I ever have much, but now I can tell you, I, I, I've got to find that care. I really do. I've got to, I've got to search for it. See, this, this fight, the fight that you guys standing right now, you know what it's doing? It's bringing... See, a part of this, the experience that we have, it's like when you're mixing concrete, okay? And, and Joel, what goes into concrete? Or is Dylan here concrete? It, it, it's sand and it's concrete. If you throw dirt into that mix, it's going to weaken it, isn't it? See, I think that's what happens in our lives, is we're, we're building this foundation of our life, and we allow some, we allow just wheelbarrows full of dirt that get dumped into the the mix of our foundation, and it weakens that foundation when the storm comes. It's, it cracks, it chips, it, 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 it has to be dug out and redone. But see, what happens is, is this fight that we're talking about, this fight of faith, it helps us obtain the doctrine. And listen, and I'm talking about the doctrine of the kingdom and the doctrine of authority. See, when you think about it, that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. What kind of athlete is he going to be when God anoints him with the Holy Spirit and power? And you know what? Some of you guys will say, well, that's not big, that big a deal. No, let me tell you what. A 12-year-old kid that grabs a hold of purpose in its life, well, it's just sports. Let me just tell you something. It's not just sports. There's three things that the Word uses to to, to bring analogies into, into context for us. And it, you know what it is? It sports the military and agriculture. So it's one of the big three. So you look at this, why? why, why he could be the next Mickey Mantle. Mickey Mantle hit 500 foot home runs in Yankee Stadium. 
See, you think about this, you gotta grab a hold of purpose today. The purpose of your life. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Three quick points you guys are understanding. And you go back and re-listen to this on the internet and take notes. But three quick points. Know who you are in Christ. You gotta know it. You don't just got, well, I know who Jesus is. No, you know what? If you don't know who you are in Christ, you probably don't know who Jesus is. I'm just saying. Number two, you have to be able to rest in his promises and his promises of his way of doing things, his promises of the kingdom. See, because the government of the kingdom is on his shoulders and there's no end to it. There's no end to your health. There's no end to your prosperity. And the third one is what you're doing right now. You got to stand. And, and, and my working definition of taking a stand is I'm driving a stake in the ground. I'm anchoring myself to this promise right here. And we, we had to do it last week with Taylor. We've had, we had to do it two years ago with Pastor Sandy. What are you going to do? I'm going to stand. What, what, what's that stand mean? It, here's what it means for me. The code of my life. I'm not going to flinch. I'm not going to blink. I'm not going to waver. I'm not going to cower. I'm not going to negotiate. I'm not going to compromise. It is that stand period, end of subject. And you know what? I get most of the church world doesn't like that. I get it. Don't care. I'm not here to please them. I'm here to please him. It pleases him when we take a stand. See, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could think, ask, or imagine. But listen, according to the power that works in us, See, you got to tap into that power that's working in you right now. See, we lay hands on the sick and they recover. Man, how do, how do, how do, how's there, how do we bring more healthy? We lay hands on more people. It's that easy. You're like, well, my gosh, it's uncomfortable for me to stand in front of all these people. No, this is the life. This is the sledgehammer. This is the knockout punch. I'm standing and I'm not moving. I'm not going anywhere. I would have lost hope if I hadn't seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's what happens when we stand. So if you're here and you're not standing yet, and you've got chronic sickness and chronic poverty operative in your life, I don't care what side of the tracks you were born on. I don't care what your education is. And you know something? You know why I don't? God doesn't. He just makes us, we, we, listen, this is righteousness. He makes us inheritors of the kingdom, inheritors of his way of doing things. You know what's going to happen in your life? Things are going to begin to grow and materialize. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all this stuff's going to be added unto you. You know what? You guys are understanding? You probably didn't walk in here today hoping to stand in front of all these people for this. But you know what? God brought it right here in front of you. And what'd you do? You ju- all, every one of you guys just jumped up. I need pastors and elders and staff people to go to these guys now and begin to pray for them. Begin to speak the life of God pertaining health and prosperity. Call the kingdom into their lives. God, we love you and we praise you. We thank you for who you are. Hey, can you guys help? Kayla, can you help? Johnny, can you help? can you help God we worship you God we thank you for everything that you're about in this place God I thank you for a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit for every person 
every person here now. God, you work your, you've started this. You're faithful to complete under the day of Christ Jesus. If you're sitting with your spouse right now, God's strengthening your union. God's strengthening your marriage right now. And remember, God's got this covered. What the enemy means for bad, God turns it to good. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. So if it comes from above, it's good and perfect. If it doesn't come from above, God turns it to good. Let me tell you, this whole thing's rigged. God, I speak to marriages in this place. God, I thank you for strength. God, I thank you for authority and dominion, for for might. God, I thank you for what you're doing. God, I thank you for what you're about, even right now. God, I thank you that this authority and this power is being translated to all of our children and all of our babies throughout this campus. God, thank you for the work you're doing in our lives. Now, God, I proclaim health and I proclaim prosperity in the name of Jesus. God, we prosper and are in health as our soul prospers. God, our soul is prospering. God, the dirt is being eliminated from the, from the concrete of our foundation. And God, I thank you our foundation is strong in you. God, we recognize your power. We recognize your authority in this place. I'll tell you what's stirring in my heart right now. God's given us the innate ability as his children, listen, to dream dreams and to see visions. God's given you a dream and a vision for your life even right now. God's given you a dream and a vision for your life right now. There's a picture of a preferred future for you that God's given you right now. We don't live by what we see physically, how we feel. souls prospering. Make that profession of faith right now and say, God, I thank you. My soul's prospering. My, my soul's prospering. God, I'm in health and my soul's prospering. My soul's prospering. God, I prospered. I'm in health. My soul's prospering. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now see your business growing. See expansion in your business. See that tumor having to go by the wayside. That breathing condition has got to get strong in the name of Jesus. God promises you rest and sleep, sweet sleep. So insomnia has to go now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Old injuries that didn't heal correctly, God's correcting them right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. If the devil's trying to convince you that this is just your age and you've got to succumb to it and submit to it, reject it in the name of Jesus. Even in old age, you'll be fresh and flourishing. Man, you've made mistakes in your life. You've had failures in your life. Let me help you. That's why God had to send his son Jesus. We all did. Guess what he does today? The grace of God right now. Grace of God, God's power right now, His supernatural ability, His favor right now, supplants that guilt and that shame, the torment that comes with failure. Makes you a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. You know, the first thing we have to do is be ready to receive good news. 
good news. Man, our, our family this past week, horrific news. They checked again, good news. It just, it just, let me tell you, it just feels like God to me. It seems like that's God to me. You feel me? So now what do you got to get ready for? Good news. What are you expecting of? I can't hear you. Man, what are you anticipating now? What's God producing in your life? Goodness and mercy follow those who believe. And he makes a place in his house for us forever. And we commit to his house, we get goodness and mercy. And I'll tell you, I, I get that this doctrine sometimes, you're not going to get a lot of sympathy here. No, you're really not. And I want to go somewhere where they're going to sympathize. You show me where Jesus sympathized with someone, and I'll do it all day long. I'm not kidding you. No, what it, what it. Get up, pick up your bed, go on home. Man, it's so harsh. He spit and made mud, put it in the guy's eyes out. Go wash your eyes out. Your face is all muddy. No, the guy came to Jesus. He couldn't see because he was blind, right? He left Jesus and he still couldn't see. But now he couldn't see because he had mud in his eyes. Man, just this last week, Sandy, it, it, it was spraying me with sunscreen the whole week. And, I'm there, and, and it, got, it got my eyes. I'm like, Sandy, my eyes are burning. She goes, well, your skin's not. I'm like, okay, good. No, it just burned. It, it, it was me to her. That guy, do you, do, you th- do you not think that that guy, man, son of David, have mercy on me. He spit and made mud and put it in the guy's eyes. That doesn't, that doesn't seem like mercy to me. But what did he do? He shifted that guy's thinking from being blind to having mud in his eyes. If you had mud in your eyes, what would you do? I'd go wash it out. What do you do when you wash it out? You see, Jesus changes the way he thinks. You can't think like all your buddies. You can't think like all your friends. You have to think like an athlete, man. All rise. Man, thanks for coming today. I'm glad you're here. Everybody say this with me. I'm saved. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm set free. In my life, there's nothing missing and nothing broken. For greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world. God, I'm created in Christ Jesus for great works. And God, I'm ready. God, I take a step today towards great works. I don't want average works. I want great works. God, I thank you now. The work you've started in me, you're faithful to complete under the day of Christ Jesus. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and never beneath. Jesus Christ is Lord of my life and I'm not compromising or negotiating or flinching or blinking or cowering ever again. God, I'm gonna walk with you. I'm gonna live for you. I'm gonna serve you. I'm gonna be like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for tuning in to Guts Church YouTube channel. I'm Pastor Chano Trevino, the assistant pastor here at Guts Church. And on behalf of our leadership team, our staff, our church, it's our hope that this message met you right where you are. If it did, I bet there's someone you know who could use the encouragement of this message in their life. And you sharing it with them can make all the difference. The mission of Guts Church is to help people win. And you can be a part of that simply by sharing, or better yet, inviting someone to tune into Guts Church online with you every week. Take that next step to be a part of what God is doing right now in this moment in time by being committed to showing up, placing a premium on God's word, and receiving all that God has for you. You can share this message, gather your friends for services, make it a priority to make this the place you want to be. God has so much for you. I truly believe that. We love you. We're praying for you. 
Can't wait to see you soon.